How the heck did King Zora make it to Lon Lon Ranch after Ganondorf is defeated in Ocarina of Time? Nearly all of Hyrule's residents made it to Lon Lon Ranch to celebrate, including King Zora. And one can only wonder how that occurred because we definitely all know that he is famous or infamous for how long it takes him to traverse a mere number of steps. His ginormous body has rendered his feet nearly useless, beyond letting them bask in a stream of the waterfall upon which he resides. The way I see it, there are three primary ways that King Zora made it to Lon Lon Ranch in time for the festivities. Number one, and probably the most simple idea, he scooted his scaly bum all the way to Lon Lon Ranch and all on his own. He would not allow his pride to be squandered by letting anyone else help him on this journey. So let's lay out some facts here. King Zora takes 30 seconds to travel the same distance Link can travel in one second. The 24 hour cycle is about three minutes and 50 seconds or 230 seconds. So if you divide 230 seconds by 24 to get your seconds per hour, it comes out to about 9.58333 blah. So about 10 seconds equals one hour in the game. So now step back and accept the fact that young Link waited three in-game hours for the king to move out of the way. And we all thought 30 seconds was bad. Lastly, the king's size while sitting is three adult links wide, two links tall while he's sitting down, and two links in depth. So from that point, we map the possibilities. How does he get out of the palace? From this point, there are two options. Number one, he can take his scaly bum backwards back to the water hole where Jabba Jabba once resided, RIP. If you look at the map, you see that the waterfall from Jabu Jabu's location is the same waterfall that pours over Zora's domain. So based on this, we could assume that the Zoras could chop down that fence barrier and allow the king to plunge himself over the edge and into the pool below. Option two, he scoots his way out of the palace the same way that Link found his way in and plunge again off the waterfall into the pool below. So. The Jabu Jabu waterfall path takes the king about 12 seconds, adjusted also 12 seconds, and the normal entrance would take about 25 seconds, or 21.3 seconds adjusted. So now that we've made it out of the palace and into the pool of water at the base of the waterfall, we can speed things up a little bit because King Zora is in fact a fish type of thing. And in addition to that, the rush of the flowing water from the waterfall will give him some propulsion to get out of Zora's river. Considering anywhere that the water is not really super deep, we'll give him only a slight speed boost. However, where the water is considerably deeper, we'll give the king a significant speed boost here. Now he has to take a specific water route. He has to go right whenever it splits, because if you go left, he simply won't fit through that canyon. He has to go to the right, which is probably gonna take a little bit longer, but you know, he's a big dude. But assuming no further complications, he makes it through the river and out into Hyrule Field. The Zora's River would take about 57 seconds or 40.2 adjusted seconds. The king will actually want to just get right onto the bank. So he swims over to the water's edge and begins the final scoot. The most direct line to Lon Lon Ranch includes a significant hill to climb. So this will definitely affect his scooting speed. You gotta take that into consideration. But after this climb, it's pretty much a straight shot over to Lon Lon Ranch. I'm gonna keep his scooting speed about the same. Hyrule Field comes in to about 48 seconds or 51.7 adjusted seconds. So he's got one last climb through the ranch entrance. He makes it past the buildings, through the gates, and over to the side of the field where he will then wallow in sadness uh, with the Kokiri kid, Mido. And lastly, Lon Lon Ranch comes in at about 16 seconds or 16 adjusted as well. And assuming we did not chop down any of Jabu Jabu's fences, the total time comes in at 146 seconds or adjusted time 129.2 seconds and then you convert this into king zora's actual travel time because this is all based on link traveling every second and it takes king zora 30 times as long to travel that same distance so 146 seconds times 30 
is 4,380 seconds. And now if you divide that by 230 seconds, which is a full in-game day and night cycle, it comes out to 19.04 days. Now if you do the adjusted time, we can shave off a few days and it comes out to 16.85 days. That's option one. Now option two if you haven't noticed already at the end of the game king zora is not alone he actually had about three other zoras at the party in that case he potentially had three of his minions pick up his scaly bum and carry him to long run ranch now it's difficult to assume that three zoras of this size would be able to make that much of a difference in the time but let's assume that they were able to make his land travel about three times as fast. And maybe in the water we give him a two times boost. Since they're very good swimmers, they could pull him more effectively in the water. Even at the speed that the river was carrying him, they would still be more effective. So with those kind of boosts, we'll just go ahead and apply those to the calculations we've already made. And the three Zoras would be able to carry their king in about 6.33 days. Now consider that they might want to take a few hour stops here and there, but they are very dedicated. I would say give them about one week. That's more than half of what the previous time was set, even with the adjustments. Now that second option isn't as exciting, but this third one, pretty good option number three king zora he writes a letter now stick with me he hands his top secret letter to one of his loyal zora minions he sets off on a quest he exits out of zora's domain down through zora's river and out into hyrule field and he goes over to kakariko village as a zora they don't want to scare anyone in the village so they have to sneak through the village and make their way up to death mountain they make it past the spiders past the rolling boulders leaping over any obstacles going up the long path to death mountain and climbing a rock wall they finally present the letter to this guy so option three king zora sent a letter to mr giant goron on the top of death mountain and the letter is a special invitation to lift king zora's scaly bum into the heavens transcending all the lowly people below and in a few steps make it over to lon lon ranch and in my opinion based on the end game facts this is truly the way that king zora made it to lon lon ranch and here's why. With Hyrule Kingdom saved and everyone gathering to enjoy the festivities that Ganondorf's defeated, I can't imagine that they waited that long to celebrate. The fact that it would take King Zora this many days and nights in game to even make it there doesn't seem plausible. They would plan the party in a few days and get everyone to the ranch and celebrate. If King Zora truly scooted his way to Long Island Ranch, I would think that he would look much leaner. He would be in lighter spirits, having conquered such a crazy trek, and possibly even be a little happier than he is because he would have had more time to grieve. Uh, his daughter being turned into a magical light and therefore join the others in dancing. But alas, these things did not occur as shown here. So it makes me believe that Zoras and Gorons united in this event and Mr. Giant Goron, that you can see dancing at the party, picked up King Zora's scaly bum and brought him over. The end. Subscribe.